think too hard about it, about wanting to move forward. That's just a natural instinct in me from since I was you know, a kid. I always wanted to look forward, just go forward, keep going, don't stop. When you stop, you die. Yeah. So you got to keep moving, you know? Yeah. And small things like that is the best way I can explain it. Um, and I'm always striving to to broaden the horizon, you know, learn more, learn more on drums. I'm, I, you know, I'm always learning, man. I'm not the guy that's going to be like, okay, I'm good with what I have and I'm going to stick with it. No. Nah. I was going to ask you just kind of starting off, um, you've been in so many different projects, but when I first started listening to Soulfly is where I discovered your drumming for the most part. And um, how did you like, how, so for, for listeners out there, how did you get into, I mean, you started drumming when, when you were young and then from high school and like, and on, how did you start getting into those projects and like get into meeting Max um, Max and I actually met through a couple mutual friends in New York when he was there with Sepultura. Mm-hmm. They were on tour with um, they were on tour with Sick of It All mm-hmm. and Napalm Death. It was like the New Titans on the Block tour. Nice, or yeah, something like that. Um, and we met each other there, and we just kind of kept in touch from there. You know, he was into That's punk awesome. rock, I was into metal and <laughs> bus pads. You know, he, he was uh, he was familiar with my band at the time, Nausea, which I thought was really cool. You know, a band from Brazil, mm-hmm. um, liking your band from New York or whatever, because we're such a small band, we're so underground. And when I got wind that they were into more underground, you know, crust punk music, I was like, I was even more intrigued to even listen to the band, you know, to Sepultura. And once I got into them, it was, you know, game over. I, I love that band from, from since beneath the remains. And Ooh, yeah. Actually we met each other when they were on tour with the rise. That's, that's just the time we met each other. And we just kept in contact since then, you know, and ran into each other a bunch of times after that until I joined, you know, up with him to do Soulfly. That's awesome. I- so, so, you know, I know your history quite in depth because we've been friends for a, long, a while. Um, but, you know, when you were coming up, say, like in the New York scene, you originally were in high You as a teenager, you were living in Pennsylvania and then moved to New York or was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, type of situation? I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you ex- the exact <laughs> order of it all. I was born in New York. I was born in Queens, New York, Forest Hills. Oh yeah. Home of the Ramones. Got to put that in brackets. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that, that, that I'm from where they're from. Um, one of my favorite bands. Um, we lived, we lived there until it was about maybe five, something like that. And then uh, my dad got a really good job offer in Florida. So we lived in Florida for a few years mm-hmm. and, and, you know, unfortunately my parents, you know, split up when I was about nine or 10. And then uh, that, made us move to Pennsylvania because my mom had a sister that lived there and we couldn't afford to get back into New York because it's just really expensive. There's just no way. Right. And, and so we moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Damn. How many years were you in Allentown? That's t- that's t- that's, t- that's t- too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know what? I had, some, I have some really great friends there and I still do. And I still mm-hmm. talk to all of them to this day. Um, definitely a uh, hard adjusting to living there, you know, coming from New York to Florida to there, you're a little kid, you know, you, you, you try to fit in, you know, to what's around you. And then you just give up after a while and get into punk rock and have a mohawk and just basically walk around like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all like that. Like I have good memories and bad memories of that time, you know, but from, but then from there, you know, I soon discovered, you know, punk and, a lot of underground music at the time. You know, I was really into Killing Joke. I was into Joy Division. I was into industrial music like Einstein and Neubauten. Mm. No wave music from New York like Swans and Sonic Youth. Like that's the kind of shit I was listening to in the early mid '80s. Anti Flag. Just to, just to escape from where I was at, and that yeah. kind of, and that kind of evolved for me to come to New York as a teenager with my brother to go see these bands and sure. the hardcore matinee shows and stuff like that. Go to shows at the Ritz and yada, yada. 
Um, Probably when Michael Alago was running the Ritz, right? I, actually, I saw a bunch of his shows that he put yeah. on. I think every show that he it was at 11th Street was all Michael Alago. Yeah. And so on. And then by the time I was like 17, 18, that's when I left high school to go tour with my band and play some shows with like Seven Seconds and a bunch of bands like oh, that. Oh, wow. Weekend trips and shit. And then I found myself wanting to move to Philly because I had an opportunity to join a band out there. And I moved to Philly and lived there for like seven, six, seven months mm. with, with the intent of getting myself back into New York City, mm-hmm. which I did eventually. And that's how I led, that led me to joining a band called Nausea, and which I was a big fan of already and a mutual friend of the bass player and one of my best friends, you know, still one of my best friends. Uh, got me in contact with with them saying they were looking for a drummer he's like i got the guy i borrowed 20 bucks off of my friend to get up there on a new jersey transit septa train got oh, yeah. there went there for a day or two played and came back home and then packed my shit and never came back that, that's when you could travel from philly to new york for 20 bucks <laughs> well it was a lot cheaper than that it was 20 yeah. bucks to like buy a ticket and to have some money to eat <laughs> you know? Um, but, but, you know, your, your career is very storied and and very long. And, you know, when I met you in 93, you were, you know, you were so, yeah, I know we've known each other since 93, 94. Um, We we lost contact for the longest time. Yeah. I'll I'll let you finish how we got. Yeah. So this is a great, I love this story and it's, of course you do. Of course I do. Cause it's my story. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but but it was it was funny Stephen Shaw who we've had on the show funny how he reconnects me with old friends and brings me new ones mm-hmm. it just everything kind of filters through him but um Roy and I met when I was working for a band called Professor Spoon I was working for a bunch of other bands and he was the sound guy at CB's mm-hmm. and um on and off on and off and and Wetlands was his main gig yeah it was your main gig at the time right predominantly yeah yeah predominantly and Wetlands was way before your time, Greg. So it was is this amazing club that was kind of got this hippie element. Like I remember seeing 311 there, uh, you know, and it was like the smallest gig that year 311 actually played. Great. And I remember seeing Pearl Jam there in an SOU night. Shit. Yeah. yeah like way back in the day, like Pearl, Pearl Jam hit big. It was on Hudson. And, what was on Hudson and uh, late. Hudson late. So it was way down in the village. Gotcha. And, um, I remember coming in with Spoon and we had this big mobile recording rig that we we're coming in with and Roy's the head sound guy. And he's like, all right, what are we going to do here? It's like, I was like, wow, this guy's really surly. I don't know if he's a real cool dude, dreads, tattoos. I'm like, who is this guy? And I'm like 19 at the time. Like I shouldn't up even. A less, a less this, uh, ADAT system. Oh yeah. The ADATs oh. dude. The guy the really, really knew how to use close. them. What's up? It was the first time I really seen them up close. And I was yeah. Like, this is great. <laughs> he had like a Mackie, little Mackie 16. Yeah. In a van with like a snake and that was it. It was perfect. Yeah. And that, and, you know, the thing is we kept playing wetlands over and over again. And Roy and I kind of slowly became friends and, you know, I knew he was in Thorn at the time, which was signed to Roadrunner. Mm-hmm. And I just lost contact with him for whatever reason shit happens. Right. Yeah. So about five years ago, my, our good friend, Andrew Shreve, um, comes to, comes to me and goes, Hey, I'm working for Gretsch drums at DW, you know, at the DW factory, come on up. I'm looking on the wall and I see this guy who's a drummer. His name's Roy Mayorga. And I'm like, where the fuck do I know him from? <laughs> and I keep going, where the fuck do I know him from? And I see him backstage at Anthrax. And I'm like, where the fuck do I know him from? And then it took when Shaw started working for stone sour, we were at mates up here, up the street and they were right. rehearsing and I see Shaw goes, come on down hang out. And so I was hanging out and I'm looking at him and he, go, and he goes to Shaw. He goes, well, when I was the sound guy, I go, hold on one second. I said, you were the sound guy at wetlands back in the day, weren't you? He goes, yeah. I go, ha ha. I said, uh, now I know, I know where you, where like, you're from. You know? <laughs> yeah, how did you know? Who the hell knows about that? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's so funny. Like how things kind of come around, you know? Man. Yeah, amazing, and it's like it's you know yeah. I'll just I'll just gush on you for a second, Roy. But the the thing is, smaller smaller the older we get. Yeah, no, exactly. And the thing is, is like you know, still to this day, when I go over to Roy's house and I see what he's doing synth wise or whatever, I learn something a little bit new from him every time. So it's (laughs) it's very very cool because he's always on the cutting edge of what's going on, buddy. (laughs) Man, yeah. Um. But yeah, but you know, 
moving, you know, moving forward, like, you know, you went to the Soulfly gig, you played, you played on their seminal record, which was a big one for them because Max's son, right. Had passed away. And that's what kind of spurned the band. Well, a bunch of things too. I mean, like he, that was, the, that was around the time, like he split from Sepultura mm-hmm. yeah. and I think a year, a year passed at that point, almost a year. And then he decided to start writing music and thinking about putting something new together. And I think he had me in the back of his mind from the bunch of times we have spoken to we should do something. You know, we always said that we never did it, of course, because he's always touring and I'm, I work all the time and right. we didn't have the means to get together and do stuff like that back then. As opposed to now, you could just send stuff to send stuff to each other via e- email yeah. or whatever. But um, so when that all went down, he, 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 uh, we got in contact, actually got in contact with me through Monty Connor. Oh yeah. I, and he was my NR guy as well. Right. So he kind of connected the dots for us as well. You know, he was definitely played a big part in me being a part of it, you know, not a, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. Monty Connor, you know, he was, Connor, I mean, he's legend I mean, of A&R. Yeah in my life for almost 30 years now <laughs> for a long time you know he's, he's been a part of pretty much a lot of he's, I mean, he's, anything he's, i've been and been involved with with roadrunner you know he's been that in, and a lot of people's life and, and fuck, can't, can't get away from him <laughs> i can't get away from him. I, love, I, love, I love monty he's the best it's, it's so interesting you know let's touch on the one thing that you kind of just said and said in there when you were talking about soulfly you work all the time and it's something i've known about you since i ever at first met you is that you just your work ethic on how you've you know carved you know a niche for yourself in in this industry what's always been kind of your philosophy on on being that resilient that mentally tough great question you know is it something that you know, I mean, you know, some people don't see that in themselves. They just do it. But the thing is, is to me, I, I see you always pushing forward. And I see like this story of a guy who's, who's, you know, well-respected in the industry as a drummer, but also just musically is just insanely good at what he does. Thanks. Yeah, um, no I, I don't really think too hard about it about wanting to move forward that's just a natural instinct in me from since i was you know a kid i always wanted to look forward just go forward you stop you die yeah so you got to keep moving you know yeah and small things like that it's the best way i can explain it um and i'm always striving to to broaden the horizon you know learn more learn more on drums i'm I, you know, i'm always learning man i'm not the guy that's gonna be like okay i'm good with what i have and i'm gonna stick with it no nah. YouTube and Instagram, there's millions of drummers out there that I see that I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> I, try to, I try to utilize what I see and try to put that in, into what I play and at least imitate it. And it comes and it mutates into something else. So it's great. I love that I have access to seeing all these amazing musicians out there, whether it's drums or synthesizers. And I just take all that in and, just, you know, get inspired and come up with something new. You know what I mean? Is there anybody that you're listening to now, drum wise that you're like, wow, uh, you know, like I've just been listening, honestly, listening to new Deftones record. I'm, oh, I'm, oh, you know, oh. Abe, and, Abe and I are really good friends, but I've always been a really big fan of his. I loved his drumming ever since I yeah. first witnessed the Deftones. And I think that was in 96 when I was playing drums for shelter, we played with them in at Ross Gilder and they were there. I think they were touring for the adrenaline record. That was the last, first time I ever seen him play. I and saw them at Coney Island high and was blown away by them. them since. And I've been listening to him like the past week now with their last you know, record they put out. Yeah. Ohms. That's great. That's a great band period. Oh, my, one of my favorites of all time. I love everything about that band. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing and, him. And they're, they're great dudes. You know, I have, yeah. uh, have a, a long history with those guys, you know, known them for over 20 years as well, since I started with Soulfly. I mean, we the Soulfly and Deftones had always had a connection, you know? Yeah, Head Up, right? Yeah. Max was on Head Up song. Well, Head Up, actually, I think originally Max was writing that for what would be Soulfly, but then he, I think he ended up use, obviously using that with them. And the lyrics, Soulfly... That yeah, in the song. we were even a thought of a band. So when I think like at the end, 
Max finally got the idea to use the name Soulfly. He was coming up with all these names and then just literally right at the last minute before the record came out, say like a few weeks before, before it went into production, he settles on the name Soulfly. I was just like, yes. <laughs> what was the name before that? What was it? What wonder- no, it was no name. It was just Max Project, Max Cavalera. I kept calling him Max, Max Satura. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, it was great, man. It was great times. I mean, it, it, was, it was awesome. Like, I mean, all of us were trying to come up with a name. It just didn't stick. And the other reason, I think, also because the first show we played was the Dana D. Lowe Benefit show. Mm. The name of that show was called Soulfly. Mm. And I think at the end, he just the name just stared him right in the face. And he's like, fuck it. Call him this band Soulfly. Yeah. That's what this band is about. This band was born because of what happened and you know it's, and it's a, a tribute a forever tribute tribute to dana so yeah, yeah. i think that's why yeah. it happened yeah <laughs> yeah so it's a really cool name it's a really great positive meaning you know it's it's awesome yeah so now yeah. he has now his son's drumming for him right like yeah. that's see Kicking no, ass. Kicked, <laughs> yeah. dude, not for nothing he looks kind of miserable when i saw him like he was awesome but yeah. he was he was he, he looked pissed off like unless that's just the way he is like his, his Keith Moon when he plays I love it because like so he <laughs> a towel while he was playing and he was running and he's like he threw me a towel and like the guy wasn't looking at him and he's like <laughs> yeah, it could also be just like the tech dude you know never but, know yeah um it was cool because I I know Mark Rizzo because of Il Nino's from uh, New Jersey so yeah. I'm in New Jersey over here how you doing I know and, Mark. how you doing <laughs> how you doing <laughs> I love Mark he's great. Yeah, so uh, like I saw them at a, a really small club over here called Dingbats, and this was like last year, and they yeah. packed it. It was like I guess it, it was a a between show, so they just took a show there, and like uh, it was they fucking raised the roof off that place. It was fucking yes, Zion, man. He's been he's been uh, he's been at it, you know, since he was about six or seven. I mean, when we were recording the first album. He would when I wasn't on my drums, he would be on my kit messing around. And I'm like, okay, kid, okay, get off. I gotta play. And you get off <laughs> just stop. And you get this mom. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kid, man. I gotta I gotta play, you know. I was like, yeah, I'm back at it later. He was he kick ass then. He was really he was really, you know, instinctive and agile and and in it to play then, you know. So mm-hmm. it's it made total sense. And I knew he'd be he'd be the guy eventually behind the kit. And here's something that's a random question, but it's relevant. Your daughter, you have a daughter. She's adorable. Um, we, uh, you know, she's oh. Facebook and the, the media, you know, your wife uh, puts up a lot of stuff and it's, 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 it's great to see that side of people. Um, so for you, how is it being a rock star essentially? Right. I mean, we're, it's, the, it's true. Wait, does she want to play drums? Does she want to play an instrument or like, is it just like, how is how is that for you being a she, dad? I mean, I'm not going to lie. She's got every instrument. In, in, in the house at her disposal, and she isn't really really jump on it yet. I mean, she's really into dancing. She really yeah. loves to sing, you know. And she's just a character, you know. It's great. I yeah, imagine. I think. I think. I mean, just great artist. She's a really. She's yeah. really great at illustrating. You know, like it blows me away what she draws. It's like wow. She's really really good at that. It's a, it's really awesome. got, she hasn't really touched the instruments yet. I mean, she's gone to piano here and there. Yeah. No, I don't know. Some people are, are late bloomers with that. Maybe she'll get into it later when she's older. Maybe not. I'm not going to push her because I don't. I want her to, you know, like it. I want her to naturally sure want to it. Yeah. And her doesn't push me to play. My that's thing. My that's parents, that just came out of out of me. You neither you neither have it in you. You don't. You don't. Yeah. You do. But my parents like they they were like no 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 and like that means <laughs> that means you want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I just did it because like my grandma had cancer when I was little, so we couldn't play. And like, I literally had to run away from home. And that's when I met Mike. And like, I literally had to make up for lost time in a studio that I was given. And I got to make up for that lost time. But like, I, I mean, my, my dad was like, no, you can't play drums. You're not playing drums. I'm like, but I want to, and I can, I know how to do it. And he's like, I don't care. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, I want to do it. And then I watch like these kids that I teach and they're like doing a million things. Right. And their parents are like, you want to play drums, right? And he's like, yeah, I guess. I'm like, listen, you don't, if you don't have to play drums, if you don't want to, I'm not going to force you to do it. You're playing lacrosse, football, this and that. So it's like, they get given so many different things. It's like, how are they going to be good at one thing? It's like, right. just, just do that yeah. one thing. You know, I did, I, fo- I quit skateboarding to do drumming because I knew I would get hurt and hurt my, break my wrists or something. So it was like <laughs> that, that, 
once I ollied 10 steps, it was like, okay, drums. I did the same thing. I'm pretty bummed. <laughs> 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 I just, kids, kids are given a lot of options these days. And I think it's like, it's just, it's a cool question for me to ask only because like you, my dad wasn't like, like playing out and touring. Like you're the dad that does that. It's gotta be pretty cool. Like if you're coming in for when school was prevalent, um, kids had to go to school. You could come in for like career day and just be like, Hey kids, don't do drugs. No, but- I haven't done the career day thing yet. Well, I mean, I think now would be the time you would do career day, but you can't have that because we don't have yeah. yeah. In um, person school, you know what? It, it, but there's a downside to to have being that too. The the touring musician guys, you miss out on a lot. But fortunately, you know, I'm home for a couple years at a time. You know, but now I'm really home, which is great. This is the first time I've been home this long in a bunch of years. So it's relining in all of what's going on. You know, yeah. I'm spending more time with my family, spending more time with my daughter, and watching her grow i mean just, man i've watched her i can't believe how much she's grown in the last seven eight months it's nuts. yeah you know crazy it's it's great to watch you guys you know because i see your guys instagram it's just the, the artistic masks you guys make and just the little projects you guys do together as father and daughter just it's mm-hmm. it just warms your heart every time i like, open your instagram go. it's another nico nico and roy roy uh collaboration so it's just great to see man you know it's it's good dude you know i i I'd like to use, you know, as a pointed North example as like guys who are decent people and who have been able to kind of manage success in the sense that there's a lot of guys who've who've been divorced several times or whatever, but like you, Cassie, your wife, um, in, in being able to hold kind of the family unit together, it's such a great thing to see how tight of a unit you guys are when you, when I see you in person, not to, delve into your personal life too much but we've been, you know we've been through a lot man you know we've been, yeah. we've been together for over 20 years now it's it's crazy you know yeah a, a lot <laughs> anyone's ever been through this year is a tough year on everyone yeah no totally for the world this is definitely one for the books for everyone yeah, yeah. no totally and, uh, my brother's a hairstyles at high hairstylist actually um i don't have hair but we used to be locked. Up. I did. Uh, I, you know, I, I went to go visit him before, like before the podcast, and I went to go see him. And he's like, "Yeah, well, I can only take appointments like an hour at a time, so he has to wait. Like, they can only have one person in the salon. That's it, and they have to yeah. wait. And yeah. and when that person leaves, then another person comes. So just imagine that waiting period, just sitting there and being like, oh my god, I could have fucking." You know, had three hair, three hairstyles done already. A color, a cu- a Brazilian blow- blowout, whatever you call it. But uh, yeah, yeah. He's that's a that's a hard trade, man. That means you're standing on your feet for like eight hours a day. No, she's my cat. My wife's been doing it for now thirty five years. So yeah, I mean, easy. It's a big toll on your body, you know. It does a great job for you and Mike. I'll tell you that. It's up to us, mm-hmm. to, you know, keep our bodies healthy and active, you know, as best we can. It's, but yeah. it's hard to get motivated to do that, especially during this time, you know. Yeah. I've only yeah, recently, definitely. I've only recently started playing drums more and started doing yoga now with my, with, with, with Kazi, you know, like I, I, and I hadn't done that for a while. I'm like, my joints, everything's all aching and messed up. And it's like, Oh, moving again, dude, not to complain like an old guy, but like, I literally started lifting again this week and I woke up this morning and I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm I like, I've, I haven't felt like this in years. Like I felt like old man, dude. I'm like, I'm going to do some yoga this morning to recover. Amino acids, man. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. D- um, you know, so right now I know you can't delve into what you're doing currently, but um, kind of like we can kind of graze through the transition of being a working musician, right. Mm-hmm. And staying consistent in doing that and, and making a living for your family and like providing and like, that's gotta be, you know, a mic kind of, you know, went into this a little bit, but the mental stability that you have without letting your thoughts, like your fears overcome your ambition and your, your consistency to maintain I have my moments. Yeah. <laughs> man. That's the thing. That's what, you know, I keep cool. I keep it in control. <laughs> so like, how has it been like, you know, getting from one, you, you've been, in, you know, we have your, um, your project, your site up with all your, um, you have everything you've done. And it's like, it, the list is massive. So for you, when you did, let's say just going from Soulfly into the next, so what was the, like, can you kind of 
graze over that. Like, okay, from Soul Flying, you started doing Stone, you know, then you got into Stone Sour and you did projects between that. How did that kind so of. There's a lot of stuff in between uh, yeah. uh, Soul Fly like and. President, there's a few things in there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff between Soul Fly and, and uh, Stone Sour. Um, well, right after Soul, Soul Fly, when I, I moved out of New York, and I left mm-hmm. Soul Fly the first time, moved out of New York, moved to, moved to LA. Um, I joined a band called Medication, mm-hmm. which consisted of Logan Mader from Machine Head. Oh. Robert Trujillo on bass. No. Oh. This is when Robert was still in 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 Aussie. Aussie. Um, and Whitfield Crane. Sings, yep. I'm like, like the kid Joe. Nice. And this kid, this guy named Mark Mark uh, Mark Blunt from um, from a band called Day in the Life from New York. Yep. So it was us us five, and I played with them, you know, for a year, a year or two. And in between that, during that year, I also played in this other weird side band with Robert and uh, the actress Shawnee Smith from Becker and Saw. Wow. He's a singer. Oh. Band, got this band called uh, Five Five Dollar Ho. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the blonde girl? Like the, the blonde girl on Saw? Yeah. The main I character? Produced, produced one of their demos. I played on I played on a bunch of stuff from them. I played maybe one or two live shows with them. And that's it. And then I played with Downset for a while. Really? Which a lot of people don't know because uh, I, 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 because we only played, I only played three or four shows with them. I played a bunch. Um, it was great. It was great playing with them. They're old school, man. I remember them. I saw them at Tattoo the Earth. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was probably a little bit right before that. Yeah. Yeah, right before that. Because wow. then I ended up playing with uh, medication some more. And then 2001 came up. I rejoined Soulfly. And recorded Soulfly Three. I lasted with them until about 2003, and then yeah. I played ways with them. And then Mikey Doling and Cello Diaz, the guy, the mm-hmm. bass guitarist from Soulfly, did this other band called A Bloom. A Bloom, which I played drums in with Jason Radford and Levon Sultanian from the band One Side Zero. Yeah, I definitely heard of them for sure. From uh, from uh, System of Down was actually producing us, and uh, we made some demos with him, and we had some we had some momentum, and then it just kind of went nowhere after a while. I don't know why. It was a band that I thought was pretty cool and had had, had a you know decent chance, but then we just kind of just you know faded away, and yeah. I stopped playing drums for you know a good year. Really, started working at the Key Club, doing front of house. I was working at my wife's hair salon doing extensions. I literally put my sticks down and yeah, yeah. was and pretty much said to myself in the universe, I'm done. It's really? Not, it's not going to go any more than this. I'm 35. I don't see a future in this anymore. Wow. I had a drink. I cried. I moved on with my life. Right. And, and then out of nowhere, I get a phone call from Dino Cazares from Fear Factory <laughs> oh. meeting a drummer to help him write some songs for that Roadrunner United compilation. It's a trip on our 25th anniversary tribute. Mm-hmm. And I was, I got, th- I got that phone call and I was like, wow, you want me to play? He's like, yeah. I go, are you doing anything? I'm like, I'm not doing a damn thing. So it was great to play that style of music again, the thrash metal. I'm like, yes. You know, I haven't played that since, you know, Soulfly, you know, and it was about three or four years, three years or four years, two years span or, you know, I wasn't doing anything. Um, wasn't sure what I was, what I was doing. Right. Um, so Little then, uh, so then, it, so right. it just kind of snowballed after that, you know, the next thing I know I'm, I'm playing live with him and a bunch of other people for that Roadrunner show in New York. Oh, yeah, dude. And after that, um, you know, got to, you know, got reacquainted with Andreas from Sepultura. <laughs> he told me at the time, he, Igor, you know, was expecting a baby. He's not gonna be around for this tour. Do you want a tour and to play drums? I'm like, yeah. Cause I had nothing. So oh, man. I, I, it was great, great timing. And um, it was really cool that, you know, Andreas, you know, thought of me and that even to ask me, he's like, he's like, you know, some of the songs already. So learn these extra ones. So I learned some more. I went down to Brazil and practiced with them, toured with them in Europe. It was great. You know, now, as Sepultura, as Sepultura. Yeah. Wow. And then I came back home and got a phone call from Stone Sour from actually from Nick Rasky Lennox, the producer saying yeah. the drummer. Um, 
to come in and play some songs and I did. And then a week later, I got a phone call from them saying they want me to join the band. And then that's the first band that's ever made me a member. Right. They were not a, not a, not a hired gun, that hired gun thing that stopped right there. And, you yeah. know, I think, I thank Dino. I thank Nick. I thank everyone. You know, I thank the whole universe for, you know, opening that door for me again, you know, I'm sure. that. that's a beautiful story, man. It's a, it's like all the dividends end up coming back to you when you let go, like yeah, that man. moment you let go and said goodbye and you just were doing I your really thing. Did, man. I really, I really did say goodbye. And it was, it was crazy how it just was like, mm, you're not going anywhere. Yep. So, thank that's you. that we talk about like uh, Mike and I, anyway, I mean, we don't really talk about, you know, personal development mindset and the way <clears throat> you got to really stay attached to like, you could, it, there's this saying it's um, Wayne Dreyer. He's a doctor. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> be attached to nothing, but open to anything. Like, so exactly you can be, wanting something to have a certain kind of outcome but the more attachment that you put towards it the more excess potential you put on it yeah. the more let down you're going to be you build up all this excess potential and then what happens is it doesn't happen then you get let down and then that's your new norm so if you're able to stay do what you do live in the moment and then detach from it and just say I, you know what i'm doing it whatever i'm done with it but in your mind your subconscious is already convinced from all the work you've been doing that you want that. And then yes. as soon as you let go and you're doing your thing and you're not even paying any mind to it, all that back work that you did comes back around. Good analogy, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, a, you know, I, I don't, I just study this stuff and I'm really into it, but like, I think you naturally inherently have that in you. And a lot of our guests do because a lot of our guests are on here because they're successful and they have this certain type of way of looking at things where yeah, obstacles come up, but they, they're very, they leave clues, those obstacles, and then open up new opportunities come from it. So that is a, a really awesome story. So ever since then, like the ball hasn't really dropped except for this fucking pandemic that we're going through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's not zombies on the street and everything like that, but, uh, yeah, yeah but we're in the same boat, you know, we're all in the same boat and it's okay. You know, um, just got to write it out see what happens, you know, um, in the meantime, just take care of yourself and your family, you know, make sure that's, that's okay. You know, yeah, that matters more than anything. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a stone sour fan. I like, I, I've seen you guys a bunch of times. Uh, and you're, you're, you know, I'm not, you know, you're fucking awesome drummer, obviously. Yeah, um, I, you know, I'm a drummer. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> around, yeah dude, I just, I just, I just do what I do. You know, it's, that, it's not, it's not well, like I, I'm definitely not that guy, but I appreciate the compliment though. Well, here, here's, here it is. You, you know, I was going to ask you this. From going from Soulfly with like more tribal drumming, thrashy a little bit, to going to playing with Dino, which is really, really double bass pedal, yeah. right? That's a bit right. extreme, yeah. That's a <laughs> like you haven't, you stop playing drums and you go right into it. Like that's what you're going into. It's like the fucking highest. Yeah, because I, I really, literally haven't haven't played. Oh wow! Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah it's about weird. that. And it's funny, like when all that was going on, I had nowhere to practice. I had mm -hmm. drums, and luckily. At the time, you know, um, you know, rest in peace, Wayne Static. Yeah. He loaned me his rehearsal room. He let me set my drums up in there with all the rest of Static X's stuff and use that place, his place to practice for all of that. What a guy. Um, you know, for 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 the Roadrunner thing. Well, actually the Roadrunner thing, I was in Dino's place. But before that, that I was I was in Wayne's place. And then when, when the whole roadrunner thing was over, I needed somewhere to practice for Sepultura, somewhere to practice for Stone Sour. He let me his place. He's not, awesome. not really cool enough to, to let me do that. The whole band, you know. Yeah. I know him a lot too, you know. Yeah, whenever you can help, you know, I, that's, that's awesome to have that. The come same. You know, like if, 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 if a, a musician or anyone needs the help, you know, I, I have something that they need, I'll, I'll give it, you know. Uh, uh, you need space to record? Okay, come here, you know. You need... Hardware, you know, do you need any symbols? Roy, I need, Roy, I need DW drums and I need, um, who you endorse by symbol? <laughs> I'll order. I think that's done. <laughs> wow. no, I mean, like, like I'm, I'm always, I'm always, you know, I'm always there to, to help. Yeah. That's great, man. No, it's, it's, it's a brotherhood. Like, like if I didn't, if I didn't have a band that like was almost getting signed by Roadrunner 
um, break up and then give me their room. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been drumming the way I did because of them. They gave me their room. They're like, listen, we're breaking up. I'm going to join another band. Probably won't be back for two years. Here's a room. Catch up on all the practice that your dad never let you practice. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Good old Waldwick, New Jersey. It's a nurse. It's a, it's a old people homes. Nursing now. home now. Wow. Yeah, um, I think that's fucking amazing. Mikey. I'm going to help any, and everyone, man, everyone, if, if you need the help and I'm there, I'm, I'm, I'm there. You know? Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. That again, goes back. This speaks so highly of you know, speaks so high of your character. Is you know, it just always to me. I always get a warm feeling around you of being that kind of guy. It showed when you were you were tapped to join Hell Yeah, yeah. in honor in honor Vinny. And I remember the day um, when we were hanging out at the Roxy for Mark, the Mark Morton show. And you mm -hmm. turned to me, I will never forget this We're sitting on the side of the Roxy in the parking lot. And you go, uh, I just got asked to join hell. Yeah. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't, don't say anything. Like it was that early. In yeah. The it, took me, it took me actually a week to really think about that. Cause like, I, I, I mean, that's a, that's a heavy, it's a heavy, uh, shoes to fill. It's, it's, well, that it's just a, it's just a really heavy situation. I mean, we, you know, we've all known Vinny forever. You know, he's I've known him for fuck man, long time, and and it's just bizarre that it's a reality that you know he's not here, and to have his band call you to play, it it just was like I don't know if I can do this, you know. Um, yeah, some serious shoes to fill, and I, I mean, I hope I, I hope I did it justice. I did the best I could, you know, and. You know, just to carry the torch, you know, yeah. help those guys carry the torch, you know. Well, I think you did an amazing job Thank at you. it. I mean, I, you know, I got to see the show in December and it was, I was I had like, the best time with them, man. You know, it, yeah. it, was, it was, it was bittersweet, you know. Um, it was great that they were out playing. It was great that we were celebrating Vinny, mm -hmm. but it was really sad at the end of the night, too. You know, it's like, and I'm sure it was weird for them when they turn around, mm -hmm. it's not Vinny, it's me, you know, it, it I'm sure it. You know, that was a messed them up every night. They told me that, you know, it's weird for them. I get it, you know? Yeah. It's weird for me. It's weird for me. Like, I'll, I'll be playing yeah. to get where I'm at, but there'll be some times where I'm playing and I'll be like, I don't believe I'm doing this. That's surreal, man. I can only it's, imagine. Especially playing a Pantera song right after a video montage tribute to Vinny. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where it really it dawns on you in your head during your your show your your show mode where you're like oh my god you know it's like every what night. song did you go into after the monologue um, broken it's, yeah it's a hap it's a you know yeah. uplifting party, kind of song. party song you know because at the end of the day we all know this Vinny doesn't want anyone to be sad or crying he wants everyone to be fucking happy having a good time and having a good time fucking drinking and going nuts you know right. that's, that's was, what we did you yeah. know yeah, if we did that in honor for him every fucking night you know yeah it's funny you know P. King was one of our first guests on the show and we talked about you and and you know he even said that, a lot, dude P. King fucking yeah God. and Tom LeVay <laughs> it's on the <LeFay. laughs> Craig thinks he looks like it's on the bay. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it was, you know, he's, he, you know, told us, you know, you would, you would turn to him like every night and go, did I do a good job? <laughs> he's right. was always like, yeah, he's like, it was all right. You know, it's like, he's the guy yeah, that, I, well, him, him and the band, if, if I don't get their approval, then uh, that's it. I go by, yeah. I, I go by their body language. Am I doing all right? They're like, yeah, you're doing fine. I'm like, I get it. I care about what they think. Of anybody else to I care about what their fans think because I, I really want it's for them, you know. And I want to I want to do it, do it do it right, you know. Yeah. I don't want to piss anyone off. I yeah. want people to feel good, you know, yeah. and and walk out of there like okay, you know, he did all right, you know, he did all right for my for my favorite drummer. He's my yeah. favorite drummer too. Yeah. Ditto. Ditto. I mean, to me, Vinny was like the John Bonham fucking metal metal dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, He's no 90s, 2000s fucking John Bonham. No one had a groove like that in fucking metal. Nope. Oh, yeah, like you, you listen to like that. Those you put it on your Instagram, like just practicing it, but like the upbeat on the kick drum pedals on becoming. Yeah, I still can't get that down, man. 
I don't think anyone can. I mean, there's people that tried, but there's that's 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 a that's a really signature Vinnie Paul thing. And he yep. even told me. I remember when he, tro- he told me he tried. He showed me how he did it. Mm-hmm. I was doing it completely opposite. And oh yeah. Long. And he's like, "That's not how you do it." I'm like, "I'm like, it's not." He's like, "He's like, how do you do it?" He's like, "Well, it's like keeping." It's like it's like keeping time with your hi hat, you know. It's like you gotta keep you gotta you gotta keep your left moving on the down and do uh, the right. I'm like, how? So then he did, and then he showed me how he did this really slow, and then he went to it really fast. He's like, man, when you get it down, man, it feels good. That's all he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember yeah. first seeing it. I'm like, hmm? huh? There's a video of him actually doing it, but it's only for like 15 seconds, which really sucks. Like, and I've been I've been looking for this becoming video forever. It's like, where is the rest of it? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, he's, he's recording it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's at the end of uh, it's the end of uh, Pantera three. Yeah, Pantera three in the video. I think, and it's should. with it's when they're recording it with with Terry Date in Dallas. There's there's like three or four like montage clips. I've seen him do that. That's when I saw you do that. That's what I was thinking of. In the back of my mind. It's incredible, but, man. Yeah. Checking, I, I'm, to this day, man, I'm still trying to play that. <laughs> I can get it going, but as soon as I get these limbs going on top of it, forget it. That's like my, that's like Bleed by Meshuggah. I'm like, I don't think I'll ever figure that fucking song out. Maybe. I can do the first half of that. Is when when It's when it gets to the stop and does the turnaround, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, right. right, right. <laughs> Good warm-up, though. That. Yeah. Love it. I tell Thomas every time I run into him, I go, Thank you. He's like, for what? I go, for the best warm up ever. <laughs> he's like, oh, what? Bleed? I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, my God. He's like, oh, whatever. He always plays it down. He's a phenomenal drummer, one of my favorite drummers. Uh, yeah. um, Second. Yes. Let's pivot as the DW drumming Dorsey guy and, and probably probably one of the most po- more popular metal drummers out there, being from the bands you've been in and, and who you are. Um, not a lot of people know you for the guy who is really talented keyboard player, talented composer, as far as the film stuff goes. Um, where, you know, what in your other pursuits, and I think a lot of musicians kind of like pigeonhole hold themselves in the sense that I'm this, I've, I've identified with this for the longest time. Do you find that you playing keyboards for a long time and then coming back to drums or doing all those things at the same time keep you fresh in, in a lot of ways? I guess so. I mean, um, I kind of do them all at the same time because I just try to utilize my time. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I only have enough time during the day for certain things and I just try to do everything I can, you know, and, you know, right. be a dad, do that. You know what I mean? But since I've been home this whole time, you know, I've really tapped into other things, which is great. Like I practice a lot more than I used to. I mean, I've always practiced. I do practice two, three hours a day, but now it's been like all time now, which is good. A lot more in the last two months before that, not so much, but you know, it's been good, you know? Yeah. 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 You want it's like, I know what you mean. Like you go from one instrument and you're doing something else and then, you just go back to it and you just put in the time and then you get, you, you, you get back into it. You're like, Oh, I fucking got, pretty, it. you know, but I gotta say I'm pretty spontaneous. I mean, but, I mean, with, with, I'm fortunate, you know, to have like, you know, recording set up in my house. So, I mean, I can, I'll just walk into my room and without any agenda and just, i either sit on my drums and just warm up a bit. Yeah. Oh, this is a cool drum beat. I'll put my iPhone on and record it. And then when I really get into it, I'll turn my system on and I'll record that whole beat and then I'll just shelf it for later. Yeah. Or I walk up to my synthesizers and just turn them on, take all the patch cable, cables out, and then just kind of start from scratch. Yeah. There, you know, it can it, like like something inspiring can be sparked just from updating software in my one, you know, one of my keyboards. You know, the update, update the firmware, testing out sounds. I'm like, oh, this sounds cool. Then next thing I know, three hours later, I've recorded this whole thing. Right. <laughs> Yeah, like that sometimes I usually just I usually ha- hit the record button on Pro Tools and let it go for like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, yeah. and just record yeah. myself on on the synthesizers. You know, just completely improv, and then you know, edit the best parts of that thirty minutes down to like however long five, six minutes, seven minutes, and then have a cool piece, and then use a fa- make a foundation and work around it. That's beautiful. Do the same thing with drums. Same thing with drums. Yep. That's fucking awesome. I got to get my 
Yeah, that's fucking badass, man. Yeah, you would like Roy's setup, dude. He's got it so he can control his Pro Tools rig from yeah, the drum room. Kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Accumulated over the years, <laughs> twenty years, man. Self to capture the greatness of creativity that comes to you and spot, you know, spontaneity. That's the shit right there. It's, that's what's the best way. Yeah. And now's the time to do it because if you're not doing anything, you know, get that down, and now you have some way to capture the awesome creativity that comes out. Definitely inspired. It's definitely been an inspiring uh, year <laughs> to see. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So, if t- you know, kind of tying this all up, and we are very appreciative of your time. Very appreciative. So, thank you for being on the show. Um, is there anything you want to kind of tell anybody to, you know, where they can find you or um, any last words that you want to say uh, based on what's going on? I mean, Instagram, I'm always on there. I'm always posting stuff there. I don't yeah. really use too much of the other social medias. I don't have a YouTube page, which I should. Hmm. Um, I might start working on that. Nice. Facebook, I'm only on there just for, you know, Pants. personal friends and friends and families. Oh, okay. Instagram is the place to get a hold of me. That's the best place to get a hold of me. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I don't do the website. The website is no more really. I don't think I don't, I think these days people don't really use websites anymore. I think it's all Instagram or Twitter or whatever, you know? Yeah. Do people still use what websites, make websites. Sure. They do. Not really. Do they? I mean, yeah, but, for marketing I, purposes, I think they do in the sense that at least what I mean, we like found musicians, like, like mm-hmm. guys, if, if they're like selling that. something. Yeah. It seems yeah. here it is. You're at a certain level where, you're already out there. So like somebody for me, it would, it would be, I should have a website because you know, I need some spot for everybody to find what I'm doing. And like, I can have one central location where I could sell stuff. And like, if you really want to enterprise yourself, a website's really good. Um, and that's, that's what I'm into when the, what what the combine music combine really is as well as, is teaching bands how to really market themselves appropriately. It's because everything is saturated right now. It's good luck getting any fighting chance, which is throwing yourself out there if you're not already known. So what we do is we teach how to, you know, do right Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and like funnel traffic in and get you in front of the right audience. So if you're nobody, which no a lot of people are, um, they want to do something with their music, they get overwhelmed, it's really a good idea to start now instead of wait till it's later and you're just defeated and you don't want to do anything at all and you don't know where to start but for you it still would be good for you because you could still build a business around that and uh you know make it digital right or keep uh, it simple and just do like a i don't know a youtube and a soundcloud mm-hmm. yeah SoundCloud, that's a great way of doing it just way to find me and then like you can put your social media through there and then when you do post on instagram we'll go through your website too and if you want to ever add t-shirts and you know, drum lessons. Listen, learn, listen, learn boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> Master classes with Thank you. <laughs> I will do all of that. We, uh, can, we can help you with it if you ever needed to talk about it. Just so you know, so, you know. And so I'm, I'm really out, out, out of touch with a lot of that. So that's why I only kept it really simple and just went just right to Instagram. And that's it. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, mean, so. I have a Facebook, you know, musician page. There's not a lot of action on that, really. I mean, yeah. there is not really. Once you, once you get something going, you just do this, you kind of rinse and repeat for each platform. I mean, that's what it. it comes down to, but, um, I'm not telling you what to do or how to do it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> if you need to know, I can, can, can we can help out. I've invested. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to all information. Like, I, I, I mean, information is key. I don't mind that at all. And thank you for yeah. sure. All right, my man. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for yeah, having me. Anytime. We'll have you back on. Take care. Because right. I want to hear what the new project is that you won't talk about. Because well, when I when I get the green light, I'll be able to. I, I, I can't awesome. wait to tell everyone. I, I've been had to keep my mouth. I'm mean, keeping my mouth shut for the last five months. So okay. Oh wow, five months. Damn. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you waited this long, so you could still wait a little longer, and we look forward to it. Exactly. All right, man. All right brother. We'll see you soon. See you guys. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, Roy is one of the best. He's one of my really good friends and, you know, his family. I adore her to death. And, um, you know, just good people, the Mayorgas. Always, always, always a pal. Always a good bro. Always. So it's just- you know what? We got, we got two guys on this show. Who t- keep, you know, he wants to talk about... Pro- pro- I, I'm oh. excited to see what that... Right. Like, yeah, Tom can talk about it either. So I, we'll see. Maybe... Yeah. Um, yes, very looking forward to it. Very yeah. looking forward to it, y'all. Oh, yes, yes, very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to be said about the, the way, you know, Roy is as a person in his work ethic and how he approaches things. And I've watched it firsthand. He's not an egotistical guy at all. No, he puts, he's very humble and he's, he's, he's a, he's one of the dudes. Yeah. One of the guys, man. Like when he said what he had to do for Vinny, like, and how he approached it was like, so he, we didn't tell the full story on that, uh, the conversation him and I had, and I'm, I'm going to speak on it real quick. So we were at, at the Roxy and he knew he had gotten the gig already. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody would want to play that gig, right? Yeah, or be scared of their shit. Of their- shit of their mind or not, you know, not do it right. Right, the right. The thing about Roy is this. Roy is a historian and a person that preserves art in a great way. And it is a situation you couldn't have found a better guy to take that job mm-hmm. and do it respectfully class and with the amount of class that he did it with yeah um who knows if hell yeah it's gonna do what they do they're figuring out what they're gonna do next sure as a lot of he probably probably would be the guy who's who's in the hopper to do the gig again Mm -hmm. but i think that you know like you say in the interview it was weird for him and but you know what he did it you know he did it with 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 a sense of grace and style that i don't think anybody else could have done and There's I, been situations I, I, where, where drummers have passed, and the most recent one I can think of is, you know, nothing against Mike Portnoy, but I know there was always, there's been beef in the press about how Portnoy handled that situation, and it wasn't respectful to the Rev. Really? Well, no, you're right. Absolutely. I heard you know, the exact thing. Um, like, he didn't want to practice, and, and a lot of things. He thought he was in the band when they didn't say he was in the band? Yeah, there was a lot of things, and he also, got kicked, out of, he also got kicked out of Dream Theater at the same time. Well, so, yeah. um, was, but, but what I'm saying is, is that Roy, you can see when he says, like, I'm here to help. Yeah. That, that, that's not, that's not that's not something he just cursorily said. Cursorily says. Cursorily, your yeah. fucking vocab sometimes. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, dude. I just feel like he, yeah, like that's the guy with the fucking right attitude. He's he's not gonna go and do something on his own. He's gonna pay tribute to the songs and drum parts that Vinny wrote, and yeah. you want to make sure everybody's comfortable with him at least giving it his best and thinking that he's not good enough to do it is, is something that any, any guy would feel that way by filling those shoes. And you're not, you're not replacing somebody. You're putting your own. Well, the one thing I told him when he told me, I said, there's nobody better for the job. I, that's right. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. His, his, I said to him straight up, there's the first words out of my mouth. I said, there's no one better for the job than you. Well, that's validating to hear for, yeah. From somebody, um, because you know that's a big deal. And the and mm-hmm. again, like any drummer could just be like, yeah, whatever. I'll just do whatever. Yeah. Uh, when this comes out, should be a few weeks and uh, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll man. see you guys soon. Um, again, go to themusiccombinenow.com. And where else, Greg? Can you find us? Musiccombine.com is where you could find us. And then basically, you could find us on any platform from there. So go go from there. Go Link you tree it. But where else are we, Greg? We're on Instagram, the Music Combine Now on the Instagram. Um, Facebook, Music Combine Now. Facebook owns Instagram, so it's the same. YouTube, the Music Combine Now. Our website, themusiccombine.com. Great. And do we have merchandise for sale, Greg? We do, through the website. Where, where, do we, where, do we, where can they go find that? Music Combine. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. Just there. Sure. And we got to actually get add some <laughs> items there and, and revise some stuff. But there's shirts. Don't be a dick. We like that one. That one's yeah, that one's a fun one. Okay. Um, anyway, thanks for being on the show with me today, Greg. It was thanks great having, having you. Me, Good having you, buddy. Scowl, look. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, buddy. Having me, buddy. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Talk to you later.